The background has a really big role in the picture because it makes out a large portion of the whole image and the total look of the picture. So I'm going to try to explain a little bit more detailed uh, how uh, the background is uh, affecting your picture and what different background does and how to achieve them. So I'm going to talk about five different types of uh, background and the use of it. So number one would be a plain background with uh, uh, like a clean background and overcast. And number two will be a clean background with uh, the subject in the shadow and the background uh, would be uh, lit by the sun. Uh, number three is when you get structures in the background and uh, the subjects in shadow and the background uh, light, light it up with the sun as well. Uh, and uh, um, fourth is going to be a white total white background and the fifth is going to be black background. So all those uh, types of background I'm going to talk a little bit about and show you some example how to achieve them. So let's start with number one the plain background. Uh, a plain, clean background with uh, no distraction at all, uh, I really like. And uh, you get uh, that achieved by having a long telephoto lens and also with uh, the background further away. Uh, and you are also uh, close to the subject and uh, have a small aperture. All those types of uh, thing will affect how um, less of the background is shown in the in the image so uh, i have a picture here of a uh, wheat there uh, i taken for a couple of years ago and i have a uh, overcast and i got really close to the bird and the background was far away so everything got smoothened out and you get even uh, light on the background and also uh, it's uh, even colored so it's really really clean background uh, so it's really make the the, um, the subject to pop out and that is really nice. You can see the same thing here with uh, the Wren uh, that I got from another video I had a couple of months ago. Uh, you can also see that uh, I'm really close to the bird and the background is totally blurred out. It's no structures or a color changes at all. It's really really clean so that is the maybe the easiest way to 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 make like a, a the subject to pop out and uh, as long as you have like a good telephoto lens and you are close to the subject and the background is further away you will achieve that fame so the second one is uh, a clean background but with the um, subject in the shadow and the background is lit by the sun uh, I think that is one of my favorite uh, types of uh, background is when you get the sun to hit the background because you get a really beautiful glow uh, and you certainly get the colors to pop out even more and especially if you have like a colorful bird uh, like here you have uh, the blue throat uh, it's such a colorful bird with uh, the blues and the reds and when you get a background lit by the sun and it's more orangey you get a really vibrant color that pops out even more and as you can see here from the, the black grouse as well uh, here the sun is really low in the sky and hitting the background and that creates a really orange look so it's so 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 beautiful as well as the green fins here, uh, yeah, you can see the green in the color of the bird and the yellow and also you get like that yellowish orange background and that really makes the, the green finish pop out. I really really love that. So the, you know, how to achieve that is you have the subject in the shadow and the background is lit by the sun. But you need to have in mind that if the uh, sun is really high on the sky, 
and hitting the background uh, that would be a little bit too harsh for the camera to separate so what happened then is you are actually blowing out the highlights in the background uh, because you want to uh, compensate for the exposure so you do a plus uh, maybe plus one or plus two in the exposure and you see that you are getting the right exposure for the bird but the background is blowing out because the sun is too harsh on the background so the perfect time is when the sun is low on the sky uh, and then you get a perfect exposure and don't uh, need to overexpose and compensate for more than say around 0 0.7 and then you get a perfect exposure uh, so that is the way to achieve that uh, you get the sun light up a back type of background and uh, Yeah, and then you get a type of different colors depending on what the background is and how it's lighted up next thing is uh, the same thing you get the uh, bird or, or animals in the shadow and you get a background lit up by the sun, but uh, if you have some structures in between uh, the background and the subject uh, that can create a really interesting and more like um, lifelike image uh, and then uh, it can like add a lot to the, the image and the portrait so if you for example has uh, the sun is lighting up a background but you have a branch or like twigs or something like that in between and that is in the shadow uh, you can get really really cool effects when, when the shadow uh, like hitting uh, like yeah you, you can see that there comes different types of textures uh, you can almost like make out in the background for example uh, with uh, like uh, pine needle uh, twigs for, for pine trees uh, you get the structures of every of the, the needles but not enough to like take the focus but it, you can see there is something in the background and that can create really interesting look as well uh, so yeah that is so so nice and uh, the other thing if if you have like uh, some light coming through almost like a backlit and the light coming through uh, like a more darker background uh, you can get some really cool uh, reflections uh, of the light so you can see here with the hawk owl that I made uh, some years ago you can see how the the reflection of the sun uh, coming through the tree lines in the background is making a really nice uh, really nice background and uh, yeah it was almost like the background comes to life and uh, doesn't take uh, too much of uh, attention and still like have the uh, owl to pop out and that is really cool uh, you can also get that same type of effects with reflection if for example you have some leaf uh, or some droplets some water uh, anything uh, in the background and they hit the Sun hitting that and you get some type of uh, small spots which also creates that reflection uh, as you can see here for example with the red shank uh, and the Sun is uh, coming from behind and there's some water splash and shining through them and you get this type of re reflection as well uh, and here also like uh, the red squirrel with here is a, like a branch of leaves uh, in autumn color and sun hits that and you get really nice um, texture of the leaves uh, is lit up by the sun and re adds a really really cool effect and that also you can see here it shines through the, the water and reflects that so you get even on the both sides there so that is really really nice when you get that type of structure in the background uh, it's almost like you are painting with with a light and uh, you create some interesting background and uh, make the portrait looks even much more better than it was with a cleaner background so i have to say that is my 
absolute favorite uh, type of background uh, but it's not that easy because there is uh, more elements that has to come to place before you get that type of background uh, but when it does uh, and yeah it all comes together it's really really nice uh, and if you have that in mind when you are photographing animals or birds you can actually try to position yourself and hope that the bird or the animal will come past that area where uh, that is possible so the fourth thing is a oh, total white background uh, you can create that by like an uh, overcast sky but what i like the most is in the snow uh, i really like like high key pictures uh, they are clean and I love to have them on my wall as well uh, like you see here and uh, this hawk owl hunting in the snow for mice uh, almost touching the ground you can see a little shadow there in, in the bottom uh, and that is really really nice really clean so actually I have that picture uh, on my wall in the living room uh, because it's so clean it's so nice and you get the owl really to pop out so to create that effect you uh, are when you're photographing in the snow you need to overexpose because the camera think that it is too bright so it will dark, make the exposure too dark so I'm thinking I'm overexposing here by maybe a plus one uh, and that creates enough you pulling out the whites in the snow and the snow gets to be white so that is really nice. Also, you can see I have the same thing here with the mask accent uh, that I have uh, using also this, uh, the snow in the foreground. So it creates that mist and separates the subject. Really, really nice here. So uh, you know that I like my foreground and that creates a really nice effect as well. Uh, here's also it's uh, important to overexpose to get the snow to be white and not to be gray or dark so yeah that is really really cool and clean pictures that uh, maybe it's more easier to sell if you're selling pictures because it's much much more cleaner and uh, really looks nice on the wall as well so the last thing here is uh, making like a black background and you can create that in um, many types of, types of ways uh, one thing is when uh, the subjects are backlit and uh, the, the background is actually a dark forest uh, which is an orange shadow and therefore I'm underexposing maybe a plus one and uh, then I expose for the sun that hitting the, the subjects in the back and I won't get any highlights to blow out and the dark shadows in this, uh, the forest in the behind will be even more darker uh, it demands a little bit more post processing because uh, you uh, it's really hard to get that really dark background so I'm, I'm actually darkening it a little bit more just to to make it pop out more but that also is a really clean and nice thing to to have or to hang on the wall uh, with you when you get a total black uh, background you can see here uh, you saw that with the hawk owl with the white and here is a hawk owl with a black background here the hawk owl comes uh, towards me and I have the sun uh, to um, backlight the owl and it's a dark forest in the background uh, and I underexpose I think it was one one plus three or something like that and I got a really nice effect and you, the owl is having a other type of uh, expression than the white background uh, also having like here you see with the grey heron uh, walking past a little uh, forest in the background and I the bird itself is uh, a bright bird so I can underexpose a little bit uh, to create more of the background like dark and uh, almost black uh, and that you get a really separation from the background and you still have like structures in the foreground with the the marsh or the grass there uh, which are being light and you can uh, get that uh, combination with black background and with uh, other types of colors in the foreground 
You can also see that with a hair that I shot a couple of years ago. Here I got a backlight again and the grass is in the foreground, it's lit by the sun and you can see that the, the, the grass is really having a nice color and vibrant color and the background is, since I'm really low, I got a, a really dark forest in the background and you see that the, the hair is really sticking out and you also got that, of course, that cool glow uh, in the fur with the sun hitting uh, the hair there. If you want a darker uh, background, you need to underexpose and if you want a lighter uh, background like white, you need to overexpose and that is how you create that effect. So I hope uh, you got something out of it. If I miss something, please, please tell me in the comments down below. Ask me if uh, there is something you want to know, how um, yeah, diff different types of background work, if I missed something uh, but uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below uh, I would love to hear from you on that if you are new here I hope you consider subscribing and maybe hit that bell button and you get notification every time I upload a new video and uh, until next time I will see you bye